Hello, hello everyone, Felipe here, and we are going to continue our talk about mitigation of climate change in cities. And this is, in my opinion, the, the best video of the series. We're going to talk about resilience to climate risks. So when we are talking about mitigation of climate risks in our cities and bringing this resilience, we need to understand more about our cities. We need to identify the risk areas, right? And here I'm just bringing an, an example that is not related to to your country is just in my country where we have this data from the Institute of Spatial Research. So this study brings the possibilities of flood in our country. So we can type any city we want and just find the possibilities of flood. So here, high flood, medium flood, low flood. Here we can find also geological risks. So here you can find these areas with geological risks. So when we understand this, we can start planning in our cities the mitigation of those risks, right? So try to find something in your country similar if you want to know more about your city. So to bring you an example of those risks in the cities and how we can measure this, here is the map of my city here. So here we can see the heat island effect for the year of 2050, right? So here we can see these dark areas, which we we have more probability of heat island in our cities. This is likely to happen because these are more likely the center of my city with lack of vegetation, lots of dark surfaces. So understanding this, we can create a plan to mitigate those risks for the future. Here we can see another study for 2034 landslides. So here is the region of my city susceptible to landslides. Here we can see the risks of flood. So these are the regions and we can see a similarity between between those areas with the areas of heat island, right? So here we can see that since we have the lack of permeable areas that is provoking this heat island, here is increasing also the possibility of flooding. Also, we have the possibility of inundation, and this is kind of different than flooding. Inundation brings bigger risks for people's lives, so this is important to understand the difference between those two. This is more related to traffic issues, transportation, when we have lots of rain in just a short time and here is for example when it's raining for a week or something so it's important to understand because there are different solutions for these issues here is more related to urban drainage the superficial urban drainage and this is more related to rivers and what can we do to overcome those risks so understanding those risks in our cities we can start providing possibilities for mitigating this here is an example of Singapore they have invested a lot in the city gardens in urban areas reducing the carbon footprint and reducing also the water runoff in the city and of course the heat tidal effect and all those benefits that green areas brings for us so understanding those risks we can provide the solutions right this is a solution we can bring also urban drainage infrastructure we can bring energy efficiency renewable energy in cities so then we can start providing solution for those risks right here we can see for example an urban drainage infrastructure with rain gardens from portland this is an example we can provide energy efficiency, renewable energy, such as Freiburg in Germany from this picture, or we can provide a better public transport to reduce the emissions from vehicles. This is an example from Copenhagen. So the possibilities goes and goes and goes and goes. Now it's important to talk about green infrastructure, and I'm going to talk about each of these elements, but if you want to learn more, consider to join Ugreen Pass. So Ugreen Pass is our platform accelerating sustainability leaders through community education and tools. Here you can find some of our courses with updates and new courses added monthly. And we have a complete ecosystem for sustainability professionals, providing on-demand courses, monthly live workshops, the Ugreen Hub that is our community of professionals, epic competitions to increase your portfolio and possibilities inside of the community, monthly group mentorings, and exclusive tools, and semi-AI that is our personal lab guide through your sustainability learning journey. Take a look on Ugreen Pass. The link is in the description. So this is a picture that I brought from Maristam Design. Here you can see the reference in the corner. So green infrastructure is this network of natural spaces that is designed to provide benefits for the people and the planet, considering the city. So we will improve air quality, we will bring water purification, we will create recreation spaces, and of course, mitigate climate change. So these are some of the features of the green infrastructure that I'm going to detail for you guys. But before it is important to understand the benefits 
benefits of green infrastructure. Here we can see the heat island effect happening. Here we can see the floods. Here we can see the pollution. So many problems that we have in our cities. And this is the idea of green infrastructure, right? To reduce flooding, water pollution through sustainable drainage systems, to reduce runoff by using green roofs, use hedges to reduce air pollution from the exhausts, trees to provide shade and reduce CO2. It's important to understand that trees provide the biggest carbon sequestration, much more than shrubs, for example. Also, spaces for nature, so habitat, food sources for wildlife connected to uh, local nature spaces. So conservation areas is a big part of green infrastructure. Here you can see in the picture, it will preserve natural ecosystems, it will provide habitat for wildlife, it will improve air and water quality, offer also recreational spaces, so fantastic benefits. We have also parks that is going to reduce the heat island effect, improve air quality, provide shade, recreational spaces as well. Then we have green roofs that can be totally or partially covering a building. It will reduce water runoff, it will improve energy efficiency, increase biodiversity, many benefits. Also rain gardens in this picture you can see that is going to capture and absorb rainwater as well, reduce the runoff, filter the pollutants such as in a bioswale, I'm going to show you that later. So many great possibilities. The sustainable urban drainage system as well, here you can see one of this. This is a rain garden planter. Trees and planters are nice to improve their quality. Not that good for stormwater runoff, but it improves the beauty of a city, so this is very nice as well. We have also curb extensions to increase the area of vegetation and also to capture and manage stormwater runoff. We have also permeable pavement, another possibility to infiltrate water, reduce the runoff. And the last one has a big potential there is the bioswale because it can manage a huge amount of water. It can filter this water, reduce the pollution. So great possibilities to reduce the stormwater runoff and improve water quality at the same time. And here's how bioswale works, right? So we can see here the stormwater runoff coming from the streets. Then the water will enter the bioswale. It will slowly be drained through the soil. Then the roots are going to filter this water. It will enter on the sand or rocky part and the water will be purified and will make its way to the local aquifer. Here's another picture on how this is drained. So storm drain or even on the street by the streets. But how do we measure this quality of spaces in our city? Then we enter on something very important that is called the UGF, the Urban Green Factor. So the Urban Green Factor will provide different scores depending on the surface that you have. So for example, here on the right, we will have the score zero. And let's say here we will have the score 0.4. We can see there is improving the quality here, right? So we can go to 0 to 1, for example. And the biggest the score, the better will be this UGF. So here we can see another table comparing different types of surfaces. So for example, sealed surfaces score 0, as I said. Here we can see the extensive green roof of Saturn Mat, right? A lightweight green roof, 0 0.3. Then we go to rain gardens and other vegetative sustainable drainage elements, 0 0.7. Then we go to the intensive green roof, right? A roof with a bigger depth that we have a 0 0.8 here. And even semi-natural vegetation, example three is woodland, the species a rich grassland that is going to be the score one. And then we can measure this. So for example, we have the intensive green roof, we score 0 0.8. We have the area of 1,000 square meters. Here we have a permeable paving, right? UGF of 0 0.1, pretty bad, right? And 2,000 square meters. Here we have a grass with 0 0.4 of UGF, an area of 1,000 square meters. And we need to sum all those three areas here and divide to the area site. So the total area site, 4,000 square meters. And then we have the UGF of 0 0.35. This is from London Plan suggested targets, residential 0 0.4, commercial 0 0.3. So this is fantastic to calculate the quality of the landscape of your projects. I suggest you to write that down because this is very nice. I will keep this guide here from Copenhagen and also our complete guide that I created for this class on your Green Pass. If you want to join your Green Pass, the link is on the description, okay? They had a big problem here with flood between 2010 and 2016. So this is something that they are overcoming over time. And here we can see some of those strategies they have implemented. So here we can see the frustration system that they are using. Here we can see another one, right? This, the water runoff is going to be here. Here we can see the stormwater curb extensions, a 
bioswale entrance for water from the asphalt, some curious drainage systems as well. Here we can see a pedestrian surface with also lots of stormwater management. So this is very nice. So in my city, we have mapped all those risks and now we have some goals and goals will provide us actions, right? So what are our goals, for example, on energy? We have 40% of buildings with photovoltaic modules. This is the goal. We have 100% of buildings renovated with high energy efficiency standards. 100% of new buildings built with high energy standards as well. I can say this goal is impossible in my city, but this is a goal they put there. About waste, only 10% in landfills. Transport, 85% of trips made by public transport and active mobility. 100% of passenger vehicles powered by clean or renewable energy. Another impossible goal, but there it is. About adaptation, right? So we will have a macro drainage process for inundation. We are going to increase that. And the micro drainage also for flooding. So we will increase this volume as well. We are going to improve the maintenance, the cleaning, and blocking, right? The systems. We are going to expand and requalify the urban green areas. We are going to reduce the water losses. So all those goals will bring actions. And this is the action plan. So we have 20 actions that we need to make. And here we can see the term, right? Uh, short, medium, and long term. So this is long term, long term, long term, short term, medium term, medium term, long term. So here we can see all the 20 stretches we can do in our city here to overcome these problems. Then we need to talk about governance. Which are the institutional structures that is going to make this possible, right? All those actions need to be separated to all these institutions. So here we can see my city, the city hall, right? Then we have all those institutions. We have audiences. There's going to provide ideas for this. We have also the international, national, uh, state, and local uh, compromises, adoptions. There's going to feed the system as well. We have the population. We have the fragile community as well. Here are the sectors. So how everything is going to work. And we can't forget the inclusive climate action as well, right? How are going to be the expected social, environmental, and economic benefits for the population in an equitable way, right? So here we can see social inclusion, economic inclusion, special inclusion, all managed by the institution, right? Resilience of the urban poor, women, children, and elderly, access and accessibility. So all those things need to come together. We can't just provide for rich people, rich regions, the best solutions. Usually is what happens, but Let's not talk about it. Not today. We are talking so many beautiful things here, right? And here we have some examples around the globe. So Copenhagen has this ambitious plan to become carbon neutral by 2025. They are investing a lot in wind energy, cycle paths, heating networks that uses renewable sources. Then we have Vancouver in Canada that is reducing by 80% their carbon emissions by 2050. This is the plan. They will invest a lot in public transportation, green energy and green beauty construction. Then we have Hkavik in Iceland. I hope I spoke right. This name is very hard for me. They already generate most of this energy from renewable sources, mainly geothermal and hydroelectric. So they are working now in electrifying all the public transportation system. Then we have Amsterdam. They plan to reduce the CO2 emissions by 55% by 2050. They are focusing a lot on urban mobility, green buildings and circular economy. Then we have San Francisco in the US. They are focusing on recycling and composting. They plan to become zero waste by 2020. I don't know if they got this. You can tell me in the chat if, if they did. They're investing a lot in solar energy and green infrastructure. Here we have also my city that I already told you all the plan, but this is a good example as well. We have a Stockholm in Sweden. So they want to become fossil fuel free by 2040. They're investing in sustainable public transport, energy efficiency and recycling. Seoul in South Korea as well. They are reducing carbon emissions by several initiatives, including creating low emission zones, encouraging the use of electric vehicles as well, and solar energy projects in public buildings. We have also Paris that is implementing lots of strategies to mitigate climate change, including lots of cycle paths, restrictions on polluting vehicles, incentives for energy renovation of buildings, and also Melbourne in Australia. They are increasing resilience to climate change, 
incentive planting urban trees, energy efficiency programs, and also promoting alternative transport. So you can see that strategies are pretty much the same in most cities, right? Adding lots of trees, improving public transport, energy efficiency strategies. So this is the goal for most of our cities. So we talked about many things on this video, right? Resilience to climate risks by identifying, mapping the risk areas. I showed you an example of my city here. We could understand how can we improve resilience by green infrastructure, other strategies as well. I showed you the example of my city, of the goals, of the actions that we are going to make. Then we talked about governance. We talked about inclusive climate actions and I bring you some good examples. And the conclusion of this video is this. Every city needs to have a plan to overcome climate change. If you know someone from the city hall of your city, talk to them, show this video, and let's try to make this change happen quickly in our cities. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope I have contributed to your sustainable path and let's keep going. I see you in the next video.